Yo, what's up everyone, it's Gad, and in this video, it's long awaited for some people, we're going to be adding in jumping. I know some people are going to be excited about this, <laughs> people have been asking me for a long time, and obviously I haven't posted a video in a while. So I hope you enjoy it, and let's just get straight into it. Alright, so this is like the fifth time me recording this video, so hopefully this is the one. <laughs> so, first thing we want to do to get jumping in the game is some jumping animations. So I've downloaded this idle jump animation and then also a running jump animation off Mixamo. And then you might also want a falling animation, but I'm just going to use a running animation that's slowed down. So with them animations downloaded, I'm going to open up the animations folder and then drag in the jumping animations folder that I've made in my downloads. And now I'll open up this folder, we can set up these animations. So I'm just going to select both of these first, go onto the rig. Select the animation type, set it to humanoid. For the avatar definition, we want to copy from another avatar. And then the source, go onto the player avatar, hit apply. And now on both of these, just check on the animations and see if it's the right name or not. Mine's not, so I'm just going to change it to run jump. And then go to the idle jump to do the same thing. And one thing we've done before, which we didn't actually have to do, was duplicate out the animations from the FBXs. But for this case, we do need to. And the reason for that is, if I open the FBX animation here, you can see that it says it's read only, but then we open up the duplicated one and it's not, and we're going to want to change these animations around a little bit later on. So now that's done, I'm going to delete both the FBXs. And one thing I'm going to do, which I'm not going to explain too much, is on the idle jump animation, where it says root transform position Y, I'm going to bake it into the pose. And like I said, I'm not going to really explain this, but Try it out, turn it on and off, see what happens and see what you want to do with yours. And then for the run jump, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then finally, I'm just going to get the fallen animation going into the running folder, duplicate the run animation, rename it, call it falling. And then just drop this into the jump animations folder. So now all these animations are set up, we can go set this up in the animator. So what we want is this any state node, and I'm going to drag the fallen one next to it. Drag the idle jump above and then run jump below. First of all, I'm just going to create all the transitions. So I'm going to go from any state to idle jump, any state to falling, and any state to run jump. And now from run jump to falling, idle jump to falling, and then finally falling to running, and then falling to walking. And now we want three new parameters. The first one is going to be a trigger, and then this is one I'm going to call run jump. I'm going to add a new trigger. I'm going to call this one idle jump. And then finally the last one's going to be a ball, and I'm going to call this falling. Now what we can do is use these conditions in the transitions. So I'm just going to click on the one to idle jump first. Click on the condition, add one, and then change this to idle jump. And now from any state to falling, I just want the condition to be falling is true. And then from any state to run jump, this one is just going to be the run jump trigger. And then on the any state to the falling one, we just want to click on the settings here and turn off can transition to self. Otherwise, when we're falling, it's only constantly going to be playing the beginning of the animation. And then we've got a few more. We've got idle jump to falling. This isn't going to have any conditions, but we're just going to set the exit time to zero. And in the same from run jump to falling, we're going to set the exit time to zero. And now from falling to running, what we want to have the condition is that falling is false. And then we also want running to be true. And now from falling to walking, we're just going to have falling as false. And one thing we want to check is on this falling animation, just make sure that running is on top of the walking, because they both have the condition where falling is false. So if walking was on top, and that's its only condition, this one is going to go to the walking animation when it really should be going to the running. So make sure running's on top. And then finally, from any state, just click on the any state and make sure falling's at the bottom. And then lastly, one thing I forgot, just for the exit time from falling to running and then falling to walking, we just want to turn off exit time for both. And now that's the animator set up, so we can start writing the code. So now what I'm going to do is go into the scripts folder, open up the movement states, right click, create a C sharp script. And then I'm just going to call this one jump state. I'm going to open this up. And then once again, instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're just going to inherit from the movement base state. 
and we need to delete these two functions so we're going to use the public override void and then the enter state one and then do the same for the update state and then we can just get rid of these lines of code that have been auto filled in there. So now we've got a jump state, we need to set it up in the movement state manager. So where we've got the states here, just at the bottom, I'm going to add a new public and then it's going to be jump state. And I'm going to call this jump and then equal it to a new jump state. But also what we need in the jump state is to know what state we just come from. So I'm going to add at the top here a public movement base state and then call this previous state. And then now we've got everything we need to start transitioning from the idle, the walk and the run state to the jump state. So I'm going to start off in the idle state and then at the bottom of the update state function, we're just going to check if the input dot get key down and then this is going to be key code dot space. Then we're going to open up some brackets because we need two things in here. The first one is to go movement dot previous state is equal to this and then lastly we just want to switch state to the jump state so we can go movement dot switch state and then put in the movement dot jump and now we can just copy this if statement and then go into the walk state and paste it at the bottom of the update state but instead of movement dot switch state we want to run this exit state function which sets off the or turns off the walking ball so instead I'm just going to write exit state and then pass in the movement and then pass in the movement dot jump <laughs> there we go and now finally we can just copy this if statement once again go into the run state paste it at the bottom of the update state and then that's all done all the transitions now go to the jump state so now when we enter the state we want to trigger the right animation either the idle jump or the run jump so first of all we're going to check for idle so we're just going to go if movement dot previous state is equal to movement dot idle. What we're going to do is just go movement dot anim dot set trigger, and then this is called idle jump. Next, we're just going to check else if movement dot previous state is equal to the movement dot walk, and also check if the movement dot previous state is equal to the movement dot run. So if either of these are true, we're just going to go movement.anim.setTrigger and then in here this one's called the run jump. So now that's all the transitions and the animation gets triggered, we need some code to actually make our character move up in the air. So we're going to do that in the movement state manager because we need to actually trigger this in an animation event. So I'm going to add a new variable here where we've got the gravity add a serialized field and then this is a float and then I'm going to call this jump force and now for something we're going to need later on I'm just going to make a hidden inspector and then this is a public and it's going to be a ball and I'm going to call this one jumped and then now at the bottom of this whole script I'm going to create two new functions the first is going to be a public void and then I'm going to call this one jump force and here what we're going to do is just select the velocity.y to plus equal the jump force. And then quickly before I forget, I'm just going to set a default value up here, set this equal to 10. And now we've got that, we're just going to add another public void down here. And then I'm going to call this one jumped. And then for this one, all we're going to do simply is just set jumped is equal to true. So now we can go ahead and actually set up the animations and events. So I'm going to click on our player and then hit control and 6 which opens up this animation window I'm going to change from the idle animation to first of all the idle jump and then if we want to click on the preview here we can see it in the game view I'm just going to switch to the scene and then scrub forward until he's about to jump so I'll say about there right click add the animation event and on, on the function we want to click the jump force function and then I'm going to scroll forward like, say like 10 frames, right click, add another animation event, and then this one is going to be the jumped one. And you'll see why we're doing this in a bit. But now I'm just going to scroll forward again until the height of his jump, and then select this keyframe at the top, that's like the master one or whatever, shift and select the last one, and I'm just going to delete the rest of the keyframes. And that's because we don't actually want the full jump animation because obviously that's got him landing 
and then so depending if we're jumping off things he's not going to be landed in the same time as us pretty much but now that's done we can go from the idle jump to the run jump animation and in this one i'm going to scrub forward again and say that he's going to jump about here so add the animation event click on the function and then add the jump force one and then i'm just going to scroll forward a bit more right click add the event and then go to the jumped one but this one i'm not going to delete halfway because he goes into a sort of running animation and that's the same as my falling animation so when his legs are kind of evenly apart I'm going to click on this one shift select the last one and delete these again and now that's done we can actually test this but we're not going to be going back to the other states yet so we can only jump once but you can see he crouches down and then he jumps when he should so now what we're going to do is just set the transitions from the jump state back to the other ones so first of all what we're going to do is just check if the movement.jumped variable is true and then also check if movement dot is grounded so this means that we've already come off the ground but now we're back on it so obviously we should be leaving the jump state but now we need to check which jump state to move to so now what we're going to do in here is check which state to switch to but before we do that we just want to set movement dot jumped back equal to false so below first of all I'm just going to check if movement dot horizontal input is equal to zero and then also if the movement dot vertical input is equal to zero and the reason we're doing it like this instead of the movement direction like we normally do is because when we jump in the air we want to keep that direction and that speed and then so the direction isn't going to be zero when we're jumping if we've like started our jump in a run or whatever hopefully you understand what I mean but we're going to go into this later on but so obviously if we've got no horizontal and no vertical input then we should go movement dot switch state and then go movement dot idle but if this isn't true so we're going to go else if and then this is input dot get key and then it's going to be key code dot left shift so now if we're holding the left shift key we're going to go movement dot switch state and go movement dot run and then finally else we're just going to go movement.switch state and then go to the movement.walk so now we're just going to check this and then see if we can jump twice in a row <laughs> so you can see we jump once we land there we go we jump twice and you can say, see the falling animation ending really quickly that's because we've not actually got this falling ball doing anything yet but before I do that, I'm just going to go on the animator, click on the falling animation, and change the speed to 0 0.5. Alright, so we're nearly finished. There's just a, one thing we need to fix, and that's, you see, if we jump in the air, and I spin around, we've got perfect movement in the air. Which you might want, but if you don't, just stick around, and then we'll see how to fix it right now. But quickly, before we do that, we're going to be setting that falling ball just whenever we're not grounded. So underneath the, uh, the gravity function, I'm going to add a new function called this falling. And then here simply all we're going to do is just set the anim.setBall and then it's called falling. And then we're going to set this to not is grounded. So there we go, now that's all done, I'm just going to run this underneath the gravity function here. And so now we're ready to start on improving the in-air movement. And then so first thing we're going to need is going to be a public float. And then I'm going to call this airspeed. And then I'm going to set this to 1.5. And so we are going to have in-air movement, but it's just going to be very subtle. And it's just going to kind of slow us down or like let us move left and right a tiny bit. And then so in the get direction and move function, what we're going to do in here, first of all, is we're going to add a new vector 3. And I'm going to call this air direction. And then equal this to vector 3.0. And next we're going to have an if statement. So if not is grounded, meaning we're in the air. If we are in the air, we're going to set the air direction equal to exactly what this direction is set to. And then else, what we're going to do is just set this normal direction. So as soon as we're in the air, this direction will stay exactly what it was when we left the ground, or just before we left the ground. And then so now where we've got the controller.move, we're just going to add another bracket right at the start and then another closing bracket after the current move speed and after the current move speed we're going to add a plus sign and we're going to add the air direction dot normalized 
and then times that by the airspeed. So now we can go ahead and check this out. And then, so if I jump up in the air and then I hold the back key, you see him slow down a little bit. And if I hold the right and the left, you see him strafing a little bit in the air. So that is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I've got a lot more videos coming soon and then also a new series. So stay tuned. I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye.